The News for Jack's I team has obtained body camera video showing the initial response from Jacksonville police when a local homeowner discovered strangers had moved into her house. You're going to be investigated for fraud, okay? Nearly two months later, the accused squatters are gone, but no one has been arrested. The house was left in bad shape, as you saw there. The homeowner told police the washer and dryer were stolen. There were thousands of dollars worth of property damage. News for Jack's I team investigator Ann Maxwell has been following the story since the beginning. She's joining us live with that body camera footage. Ann? Joy, invest. ASO are continuing to follow up on this case. It's been quite the ordeal and the homeowner is frustrated. One of the women who moved into her house told the responding officer she'd been a victim of a rental scam. But as you'll see in that body camera video, the officer soon becomes suspicious of her story. But he said there wasn't much he could do in that moment. If there is probable cause, you're going to be arrested, okay? A call from a confused homeowner. I own this house. It was for sale. Leading to a testy exchange. You can choose. Oh, no, of course. I'm not going to vacate. In early March, homeowner Patty Peoples was surprised to find people living in her rental property. She has a signed oh, lease and paid $3,100 for first and last month rent and a pet cash. deposit. So, so you already talked to her? Yeah, yeah, she's mm -hmm. very calm and very, very polite. But Peoples hadn't authorized a lease. Hey, how you doing, young lady? Good morning. Hi. What's going on? So basically, um, I'm 22 years old, and I just moved out of the Hubbard house, the homeless house. My mom died two years ago. I've been in the Hubbard house for a freaking year. She said she found this house for rent on Zillow, and a man named Christopher gave her a tour and accepted her as a tenant. But Zillow has no record of the house being listed for rent at that time, and the responding officer could find no trace of Christopher. The officer's research on scene did show that this woman claimed she was a victim of a similar rental scam at a nearby property a few months earlier. A neighbor said the couple moved out of this house right around the time they moved into People's House. You're being scammed for your home. Um, this is what I believe now. When I She's part of it? The officer starts asking for more information about the person she claimed rented her the house. And how are you guys communicating? Through email. Okay, you got an email chain? That I can see. When the officer presses her to send the emails a few minutes later, she gets frustrated and says she'd need to send them from her computer, but she has to get to work. I've been respectful. I've been yeah. respectful to you too. But you're not allowing me to speak. Okay, so. So what I'm what I'm about to say is this is the first time hearing about you having to be at work at nine. Okay. Even though you stated it to her, I didn't hear that because I'm not her. Right. Okay. I've been in okay. my conference. Can I get your badge number? It's right there on the form. He tells her she and her partner should move out. Because if not, then we're gonna come back and we're gonna take you guys to jail. But they refused. Technically I can't prove it, so she, she can still be a victim. Uh-huh. And it's technically would be a civil ordeal. And JSO hasn't taken them to jail. Yeah, that seems like empty words to me. News for Jack's crime and safety analyst, Lakeisha Burton, who spent decades on the force at JSO, says the officer did not have the authority to make an arrest on the spot. As frustrating and heartbreaking as this situation is, through the legal lens, squatting is a civil matter. So the officer followed the law. The unwanted guest also seemed to know the law herself when the officer arrived, telling him her father, who sells houses, advised her she could continue living there. No, but he told me I don't have to, so it's really up to him on what he does about before y'all. My dad said I don't have to go. People says she spent thousands of dollars in legal fees to get them evicted about a month later. She found the house like this. Oh my God. People says it's $38,000 worth of damage, a high price on top of an expensive eviction, a lost offer on the house, and months worth of repairs. I really felt naively that if someone breaks into your house and doesn't have legitimate paperwork, that this is a pretty cut and dried situation. It's quite frankly, just the opposite. She says she found this deposit slip in the trash once the two moved out. She's afraid someone else could get scammed. It has become a trend here locally in Duval County over the last uh, two years. So it's definitely something that we will have to look at legislatively um, to change. Because again, I think that a lot of times some of the laws, they tie the hands of police officers. That woman you saw on the body camera who moved into the house previously told the I team that she was a victim of a scam. She became combative when we asked her if she'd been squatting there. Burton says it's not hard for people at J for JSO to find uh, suspects on the run these days. However, it doesn't appear any charges have been filed in this case. Live downtown and Maxwell Channel 4, the local station.